Sometimes family members have good reason for disinheriting someone. For example, a parent may have already given substantial assets to a spouse, child, or grandchild, and they feel like they've given enough. To ensure their intentions are followed for what happens with the rest of their estate, they disinherit the person that they've already given to. Of course, if you feel that you were unjustly disinherited, you should follow up with an attorney. What is the definition of disinheritance? Disinheritance simply refers to the manner in which a person who might otherwise have received a gift or a share of a loved one's estate is left nothing. A common example would be where a parent leaves a child out of their will and trust for whatever reason or no reason at all. Why disinherit someone? There are many well-intentioned reasons to disinherit somebody. Commonly, a parent may disinherit a child to whom they have previously given substantial gifts during their lifetime. Because the child already receives so much, the parent may leave that child out of their estate and give their estate to other children to balance out what every child got. The parent will legally disinherit the child in their will or trust. An individual can choose to legally disinherit anyone they like, including a child, parent, spouse, or family member. What are grounds for disinheriting someone from a family trust or will? As long as the person is of sound mind and body with full mental capacity and not subject to undue influence, they may choose to disinherit any beneficiary or heir for any reason or no reason at all. An exception to this general rule exists in those states that have forced inheritance laws that prevent complete disinheritance of a child or spouse. Of course, any heir with an intestate succession right may pursue litigation to seek to recover what they feel is their rightful inheritance. The most common reasons for disinheriting someone? One, previous inheritance distributions. If the parent has given the child their inheritance during their lifetime, it's quite common for the parent to disinherit that child completely or partially, simply to balance things out amongst others who may not have received similar gifts. Second, to balance out the equities between the children. What I mean by that is if a parent has two children, one of whom is wonderfully successful and another who perhaps has not had as many successes, oftentimes the parent will try to give more to the less successful child because of the successes of the successful child. That's a very difficult issue often for the successful child to process and accept and often leads to estate litigation because it is fundamentally unfair or perceived as fundamentally unfair by the child who receives less. They're essentially being punished for having been successful where the other child failed to be successful, or at least that's how it's perceived. Third, divorce. Upon divorce, it's common for ex-spouses to legally disinherit each other in their respective wills and trusts. Fourth, lack of relationship. If a child has no ongoing relationship with a parent, it's very common for that parent to disinherit the child in a will or trust. Of course, and we need to be careful here, where a step-parent, child, or caregiver interferes with that relationship by isolating the parent, for example, undue influence and fraud claims might exist. Fifth, conflict of interest over lifestyle choices. Sadly, it's all too common for parents to disinherit children simply because of a disagreement over the child's lifestyle choices, whether it's religion, whom they've chosen to marry, etc. What are grounds for disinheriting parents? The most common grounds for disinheriting parents are a lack of relationship or a conflict of interest, as described above. If it's a lack of relationship, we commonly see children disinheriting parents if the parent was absent during childhood or if the parent was abusive when raising the child. In some cases, the parent and child simply drifted apart and the child fears that the parent would misuse any inheritance they were to receive. If it's a conflict of interest, we see children disinheriting parents when they don't see eye to eye about things, including specifically how to raise their own children. Lifestyle choices, religion, and other highly charged emotional beliefs also come into play. In these cases, if the child is of sound mental capacity, they have every right to disinherit their parents in their will or trust. Can parents contest or dispute their disinheritance if the child were to pass away? The short answer is yes, in many cases. That's why it's important to work with an experienced estate planning attorney to limit the risk and manage the likelihood of success of future probate litigation. 
And if you need to pursue a claim, it's important, equally important, to work with an experienced trust and estate litigation attorney who can tell you what the strengths and weaknesses are and likely outcomes of your case. What are the grounds for disinheriting a child? The most common reasons for disinheriting a child is a previous inheritance distribution, as we've discussed, lack of relationship or conflict of interest over lifestyle choices. If it's an advanced inheritance distribution, the child has already received their inheritance during the parent's lifetime. In these cases, the parent usually disinherits the child in order to equalize their estate between their children. For example, to ensure everyone is treated fairly and equally. A parent may work with an estate planning attorney in these instances to create their estate plan. And part of that plan may be giving some or all of their children a portion of their inheritance during the parent's lifetime. After doing that, the parent may then partially or completely disinherit one or more of the children. Why? Because the parent acted during their lifetime to take care of the needs of that child, but wants to make sure that all children ultimately are treated equally. All too often, the child who receives less after the parent died still wants to challenge that disinheritance. The only way to protect against this is to ensure your estate planning is airtight and everyone understands the reasons why you're partially or completely disinheriting someone. If it's a lack of relationship, the parent may feel there's no relationship with the child and therefore they may feel that the child doesn't deserve an inheritance. Whether the parent abandoned the child or the child avoids the parent, it is fully within the rights of anyone to disinherit anyone else. There is no natural right to inherit. However, if the child feels they were wrongly disinherited, they should consult with a probate litigation lawyer or a trust litigation attorney so they can learn what their rights are. If it's a conflict of interest about life choices, the parent simply may not support those choices. Maybe the parent thinks the child is too immature to deserve an inheritance or that they'll spend the funds inappropriately. Perhaps there may be a fundamental disagreement over emotionally charged topics like religion, who they're marrying, etc. In any case, it's within the parent's right to legally disinherit the child. But again, if the child feels they deserve an inheritance, they should consult counsel. What are the legal rights of disinherited children? A disinherited child has the legal right to receive a copy of the document that purports to disinherit him or her. A disinherited child also has the right to challenge the purported disinheritance for any of the reasons we've discussed. The key is to consult a probate litigation attorney or trust litigation attorney early to ensure key deadlines aren't missed. In many inheritance disputes, the child may claim the parent did not have the mental capacity to disinherit them or that the parent was the victim of undue influence or duress, which resulted in the child being disinherited. In any case, if the child feels they deserve an inheritance or aren't getting their fair share, they should seek the counsel of a probate litigation lawyer or trust litigation attorney as soon as possible. What are grounds for disinheriting a spouse? Disinheriting a spouse is legal in most common law states. However, the spouse has the right to dispute their inheritance. In some states, the spouse will need to engage counsel and file a contest. In other states, the spouse may need only file a right of election. In many cases, this is all that's needed to establish their legal right to up to one half of the estate's community property, regardless of whether they were disinherited. Why can't you disinherit your spouse in a will? Firstly, you can disinherit a spouse in a will. If a spouse legally contractually agrees to be disinherited, they can and likely will be. However, if they refuse, then you have to pursue other options and negotiations. The laws vary from state to state, but in a community property state like California, your spouse will have a legal right to one half of the estate assets acquired during marriage, which is otherwise known as community property. In common law states, an individual may choose to disinherit a spouse in their will. However, the surviving spouse may have a right to seek their rightful inheritance by filing a right of election. Generally, they will be legally entitled to about one third to one half of the estate assets acquired during the marriage again, depending on the state law. Where there is no community property right and no right of election, a spouse is free to disinherit their spouse in their trust or will. Can I contest or dispute a disinheritance? Yes, in most states, a spouse who has not agreed to be disinherited can take legal action against a decedent who disinherited them in a will or trust. Also, disinherited children similarly can take legal action, especially if they can show that a decedent disinherited them due to undue influence, duress, 
or lack of mental capacity. When do I need a probate litigation lawyer? If you're a child, spouse, or anyone else who recently discovered you were disinherited in a will or trust, it's important to act quickly to protect your rights. Conversely, if you're seeking to disinherit a spouse or child, you have several options to ensure you're doing it right. One, an estate litigation attorney. Two, an estate planning attorney. Or three, a divorce lawyer. If you have questions, call us anytime. The consultation's always free. Do I need a probate litigation lawyer near me? We always recommend finding an experienced probate litigation attorney familiar with the county probate court where the estate is being administered. For example, if the estate is being administered in Los Angeles, we recommend working with a probate litigation lawyer in Los Angeles. That Los Angeles probate litigation lawyer generally will be more familiar with the Los Angeles probate court than an out-of-state or out-of-area attorney. At RMO, we help people like you address issues like these every day. Have questions? Give us a call or shoot us an email anytime. The consultation is always free. Thanks for watching.